I love our teenagers. Uh, I love our youth group here at the church. We've got some good kids in there. And you've got some other ones too, but we've got some good ones. And, uh, but we were talking about some, usually we try to have a night where we get the teenagers a chance to meet our speakers and our missionaries. We had a good time with that Thursday night. And I, was talking, I talked to a couple of them about possibly doing a presentation for us. Uh, a couple different presentations, two of them. First one more of a light heart love, but the second one I hope truly would be a challenge to your heart as it was when I read it. And uh, it was a real challenge to me. And all that testimony I was just given about being a missionary, giving the faith of promise, helping to spread the gospel around the world, but not forgetting our Jerusalem here. And uh, so the first one, kind of a lighthearted book, maybe a missions around the world, and then I'll come back up and we'll get ready for the second one. And I hope truly be a challenge to your heart, as I know it was to mine.
that's important as we go out to the outermost parts. But we don't ever want to forget we have a mission field here like to. We have people in our own community who need to hear the gospel. And the thing is, there is a time that we have to do it. And I want you to listen uh, to the conversation that you're about to hear between two people. And I want you to understand a little bit and li really hope that it affects your heart a little bit about your mission deal with people you know here um, as you listen. Hi, Amy. It's me, Liz. I suppose you want to know why I came to see you an hour before the funeral. I, I just wrote a few things down that I really need to tell you about. Just the two of us. Like we did when we walked home from school together. Here I am, talking to a dead body. Why am I doing this? If anyone sees me, they're going to think I have a screw loose. No, I have to do this. Amy, do you remember all those times where discussions got around the differences between our churches? You always laughed at me because I carried my Bible around everywhere I went, remember? And I always laughed at you because you thought you had to go to church on the special church holy days. And because you thought you had to eat certain things and not eat others. I always laughed. I must have asked you a half dozen times, Amy, what do you think it takes to get to heaven when you die? You always answered, well, if you're a good person and don't do a lot of bad stuff, and if you live a good life and do good deeds, you'll probably get to heaven. Amy, I always intended to tell you this, but I always tried. I just couldn't bring myself to tell you. Here's what I was going to tell you half a dozen times, and I shouldn't know. Amy, it's a lie. It's all a lie. You can't be good enough or do good enough deeds to get to heaven. Human beings are incapable of being good enough. I said it. You know, I even had a Bible verse straight uh, that I wanted to recite to you, but I never had the nerve to recite it to you, so let me recite it to you now. Matthew 5 20. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. The Pharisees spend their entire lives trying to be good enough, but Jesus said they're not good enough. If they can do it, there's no way any of us can make it that way either. I guess the reason why I never did to think about this is because every time I mentioned the name of Jesus, you got this funny look in your face, like I was meant to be efficient or something. So I sort of decided to wait for you to come ask me about it, or maybe I was waiting for a crisis in your life or something. I don't know. I look back on it now and think to myself, duh, this is a no-brainer. This is what the scripture. Jesus Christ himself said that there's no way to get into heaven except by putting your trust in him. What could be simpler? 30 seconds. Give it the chance to make an intelligent decision. What are you waiting for? This is not rocket science. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if I had to do it over again, I would tell you. You know, I mean, now that I think about it, I was really stupid. You know, I mean, short-sighted. See, I was afraid that if I had told you about the lie you had believed all your life, you would get mad at me and not want to be my friend. But if I had given it any thought, any thought at all, I would have thought about the long term, you know, the future. If I had just been brave, you and I could have been friends for eternity in heaven. But instead of thinking about the future, I was afraid of hurting your feelings, or maybe mine. So I put it off. I waited. I thought, there's lots of time. We're young. We have a whole life ahead of us. What's the hurry? But now, you're dead. And you and I will never see each other again. Ever. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Amy.